Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Villa View in association with Boohoo Man and also in association here with For the Love of Pomegranate Podcast. It's another takeover, and uh, myself and Paddy are here with you today. Thank you once again to the guys in the Villa View for giving us the opportunity to use this platform, and also thank you very much to the guys at Boohoo Man, whereby if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, I can never get my lefts and rights right when I'm looking here on the screen. But if you look here uh, in the bottom corner, you'll see a Boohoo Man offer. You get an extra 10% off all Boohoo Man menswear with the code VillaView. Does exclude some sale and selective items, but selected items, should I say, but it is 10% off all Boohoo Man menswear. So go use it. And uh, and feel good about yourself as we come into the good weather and into the, into the summer months. I must say, before I bring Paddy in there, I must say it is an absolute belter of a day here in Ireland. It's it's almost a shame to be podcasting indoors, but uh, I no doubt I will get out into it just before the game starts. So this might be a quicker one so that I can try and get some rays on my milky uh, my milky calves before this uh, before this game starts. But as I said, I am not the only one that's here today. I do have the wonderful Paddy, and Paddy is coming to me from a car. So, whoa, he looks a bit squashed there on the screen. But I don't know, Paddy, can you hear me? All the I way can in. hear you well. Uh, excellent. Paddy's on the way. Of course, if anybody knows Paddy or if anybody met Paddy last weekend, all Paddy does is go to gigs, matches, events. You know, he's like, it's, I don't know, but Paddy, I, I think that you're a secret agent for, for the tourist board here in Ireland or something. Because you get, <laughs> you get, you get tickets to everything and you're on your way up to, uh, up, up to watch the, watch the rugby in, um, in the Aviva Stadium today. But we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Aston Villa. Absolutely we've got six, we've got six minutes before the team sheet is, uh, is announced. Um, could be a different one today, Paddy. Could be a different type of team sheet. Could be a couple of players missing. And, and by the sounds of things, it looks like obviously we're not going to have the Leon Bailey um, tantrum today because he's going to be out. Yeah. But we might see a bit of a shake up in midfield. What do you think? Well, but it sounds like it looks, uh, he, he said that there'd be no Jacob Ramsey. You know, well, he insinuated there might be no Jacob Ramsey. I doubt very much he's going to risk Jacob Ramsey when we have backups to, to step in. So if, if he had to pull, out, pull up in training, then I would imagine we're going to see at least a change in midfield and a change with, with Leon Bailey. And yeah. if some people get away, we could see Courtney House back in there, but who knows? Well, the great Philly D has made a great, a great suggestion here, and I'd have him in there. He wants us to put Mortimer in for JJ today. Um, so we bring back Dennis Mortimer, put him in there for JJ, <laughs> and try and shore up that attacking option. I'll take it. I'll take it for sure. Absolutely. Um. Uh, but what do you think about the about the backline, Paddy? Do you think the backline is going to be as is from last week? I know you're you are the Chambers fan club, um, and, and you were you were the only one there for a while. But uh, do you think he keeps his place last from last week? Um, that that uh, I would never second guess uh, Stephen Jared because when when I feel like someone should be there, they're not there. So um, he didn't do anything wrong last week. In fairness, it was. A, a performance where nobody did anything wrong and nobody did anything extraordinary either. So for me, I, I would give him another chance. I, I, I'd let like we know what Kanza can do. He knows what Kanza can do. So uh, give him those, give him those uh, bit of responsibility. And you know, there's, there's a reason I like Callum Chambers, he, and he seems to be a leader on the pitch. I watched him again last on last Saturday from behind the goal. There's an awful lot of talking goes on between him and Tyrone Ming. And, you know, I, I have a conspiracy theory that he's in there to keep Ming's focused and, and uh, on the ball throughout the game. And that's not him either. So, uh, yeah, I, I, for, for the day that's in it, um, I don't think it really matters for us. But obviously, we want to go and get the three points. But I think what really matters is what happens further on up the pitch and how we go about setting up our midfield and attack. I think so, too. And, and look... While, while we, we do like what Chambers brings and, and he does bring something different in there and as you say, he's a bit more vocal, he's a bit he's a bit more short in the air. He's not the complete complete centre-half either and it is fair and I, I, I kind of agree with Jason to, to a point that, he, that 
he made one or two errors, but I don't think there was anything glaring. Like he didn't fall in his arse at any stage, and he didn't. Oh, mm. sorry, not my own podcast. Now I can't be can't be swearing swearing <laughs> like that. But he didn't fall on his backside at any stage, and uh, you know, and create anything glaringly obvious. Like Norwich didn't have any huge chances. To, uh, maybe that long shot to, that Emmy Martin has had to tip over, and I think there was one other screwball scramble in there as well. But uh, you know, while he's he's a good stopgap for where we are, and I think that he can grow in there. And look, it's about partnerships. I I'm going to be blue in the face. If, for anybody who's who's going to listen to this podcast or listen to our podcast between now and the end of the season, you're going to hear me rabbit on and rattle on about partnerships, partnerships, partnerships. Get a win today or get a win over the next couple of weeks and then just work on partnerships. I don't really care about results from there on out because we need to find a, a defensive partnership. We need to see what we have there. We need to see if somebody needs to be moved on. We need to find a midfield. We need to find something on our midfield tree because we're going to have to keep some people in there. And lastly, I mm-hmm. think we're working on the one we've been working on since the start of the season. And the one that I think is going to we're going to see an awful lot of is the Watkins Zings partnership as we go towards the end of the season. And it's becoming it's becoming better. It's 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 getting better. And we can see uh, what that uh, I suppose what that does bring to the team. Uh, when you do have two players up there, they're beginning to feed off each other as well. Um, Richard Laws makes a good point uh, here as well. And, and, and I don't know, we might actually see him on see him on the team sheet today. But uh, is the lack of Chuck Mueke a sign that he's probably off, Paddy? I know we've spoken about this at, at, at length previously. Um, well, the last, the last I, I had heard from somebody who knows the family quite well was that he was staying. Um, that's a number of weeks ago now, and he hasn't had a, a sniff of, of any action since. So, again, it's one of those ones we just have to wait and see. It's, uh, it, it, it's a bit frustrating that we don't hear anything about it, and, you know, we, we get people at the press are asking them about Man United and Man City and Rangers and, and not about the pressing matters, which, which us as fans want to know. Yeah, and, and I suppose, look, it, it will all be, it'll all come out in the wash, and I think it'll come out in the wash over the next few weeks. I don't think we'll be waiting much longer for it, if that makes sense. Um, but, you know, the, he, Stephen Gerrard made a lot of points today. He said, if you train, if you train a senior player, you're going to get your place in the team. Yeah. And we've seen that with Jacob Ramsey. We've seen that with young Tim. We've seen it with the likes of Tommy O'Reilly getting on the bench. Yeah, he hasn't come off the bench, but who the mm. hell... There was nobody on any podcast or anywhere within the whole stratosphere of even the Milky Way was talking about Tommy O'Reilly getting Premier League, uh, a sniff at Premier League level this season. So, you know, Stephen Gerrard is true to his word in that aspect. And, you know, uh, I, w- I want to see Kearney there. I, w- I hope he, I hope he, we, we do see minutes from him. I hope we see minutes from him today. And we have, I would imagine, a team sheet has been announced. And, and we we're going do- to have a bit of a tantrum here, Neil. We're going to have a bit of a tantrum. Now, I'm not going to make the mistake that I always make here and go, okay, I'm going to fire it up in the screen first. I'm going to give it time to load. I'm going to give it time to load, but we will call <laughs> out the because I get flustered and then I go, oh, I don't know what's going on here. So I'll give it time to load on the system. We'll pull it up afterwards and we'll talk about it when we're talking about the Leicester team. But the team itself is Emmy Martinez is in goals. We have Matthew Cash. We have Ezri Kanza, Mings and Dina as our back four. So once we already have that question answered as to whether Chambers is going to be in there. Um, Chambers isn't even on the bench. Uh, Oh, sorry, because he's 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 coming later on. (laughs) 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 That's almost like last week when it was five minutes into the game before I realised Dino was playing. So anyway, (laughs) spoiler alert, we've got John McGinn, Callum Chambers and Douglas Louise in midfield. So a lot of people getting what they wanted there with Callum Chambers in the middle of midfield. Uh, and then we've got Buendia behind Ings and Watkins. So you know what? I know in a lot of ways when you're when you sometimes, you know, you're trying to do the right thing, you're trying to be populist in maybe a selection or something like that. I think that there's going to be a lot of fans of this. There's going to be a huge amount of fans. There's going to be excitement to this because people have been chomping at going, we need to see Callum Chambers in midfield. You know, he played there for Fulham. He was their player of the year and he was great. And he played also a bit there for, for Middlesbrough when he was alone. Even my dog mm-hmm. likes it. I don't know. Can you hear it? He's howling away outside the, outside the window. And then as well, a lot of people clamoring for Buendia. Coutinho hasn't really gone right for him in the last four to five games. Buendia is in there now, away from home, a bit more work ethic can pull back into, into an eight position, comfortable playing there as, as, as he is playing in a 10. Ings came, came very deep last week as well, you know. So yeah. it's, we're, we're set up here to, to, to 
try and own midfield if we can, and um, to try and get a small bit more grunt in there, I would imagine, with Chambers in midfield, and then see what we can do. I wouldn't expect us to be attacking down the wings at all today. This to me, this to me solidifies the fact that Gerard kind of gave the game plan away when he spoke in the press conference and said it's a tight field. And uh, that this this shows to me that we're going to look to go through the middle and we're going to look to go go maybe direct, maybe more direct than we, than we normally would. What's your feelings on it, Paddy? Um, I have. Sorry, there's a woman trying to talk to me here while I'm on a call. <laughs> um, fans, Paddy, you know, fans, fans, they know, know you everywhere. I know. Like... She's asked me to reverse. Okay. Go for it. I'll I'll cover up for you here. Well, watch this. We no pressure, Paddy. You just have what two hundred and seventy five people watching you reverse a car at the moment. No pressure. But uh, substitutes before we come back to Paddy. There is some nice names on the bench here as well. We talked about if you out train players, you will get your chance on the bench. Robin Olsen in there, obviously, is sub goalkeeper. We have Josh Feeney is in there. Young 16, 17 year old is in there. Not his first time on the bench this season either. Really highly thought of. Came up from, I'm going to say Fleetwood, I think is who he played with. And he actually got some senior minutes with Fleetwood, if I'm not mistaken. On the bench, young man coming into this situation. I would imagine if we do have an injury at centre half position, Chambers will move back because we have in the midfield area, we've got Nakamba and young Tim are on the bench along with Morgan Sanson and Carney Ch- Chuck Moeka. Um, we've got Ashley Young in there too. We've got uh, Philippe Coutinho and we've got Bertrand Traore. So there's a lot of people that have resurrected from injuries to come back onto that bench again today. So we've sent some, we've got Traore in there. We've got the returning marvelous Nakamba. And, you know, you could you could draw lots for any of those guys, probably outside of Josh Feeney. And I would be delighted to see any of those come on today. Any any combination of that three come on today at any, at any given stage to see what we have in, in them as well. Because I think we've started the right team. Uh, we've started the right balance, should I say? I I have a question for you. Yes. And a lot of people will will shake their heads here, but is there any possibility that this is a three at the back? Paddy, you know, did you ever hear of cancel culture? I get you banned. Talking about three at the back gets you banned. You know, <laughs> and I'll all do it. We have it. That's that's a dirty word. No, I I joke. It's joking aside. Um, maybe, maybe. I'd be surprised. Um, I'd be surprised, but it is you know we have we have to give it from both sides. It is a possibility, judging by judging by who he picked that that, that could be the situation. But I hope it's not. I'd, I'd lo- you know I've been crying out to see if Chambers can do it at this level. At, at we know he's he played there previously, but to to, to play in, in the Premier League at at, at this level, at as a defensive centre midfielder, yeah. Um, I, I'd, I'd rather see that than a three at the back, but. It's just it's just an option that we might see when the game kicks off. Yeah, um, PSK thinks that we're we're playing three five two, and uh, avid listeners of, to our podcast will know that we flashed up comments from PSK maybe ten minutes before team sheets before that have turned out to be right. So I will take that as gospel. <laughs> I'm not going to say that PSK is ITK, but he's as close to it as I've come across so far. Anyway, so so thanks a million for that. Noel Connington says beautiful technique there, Paddy. You did, but. Uh, I thought you didn't use your wing mirrors at all when you were reversing, so uh, I'd probably give, I'd probably <laughs> deduct you a point there for a moment. Richard Law says about Josh Feeney, Josh had a birthday this week, so maybe it might be a little bit of a present for him. Uh, I don't think Stephen Gerrard strikes me as the type to give out any types of birthday presents like that. I think it's more so <laughs> the fact that Courtney House is injured and we've got our three centre-halves there um, on the field as it is. And, and look, he's... And look, it's, it's, of, it's important to get these, these guys in, in around the team. I would imagine, if anything, touch wood, it doesn't, but if anything happened to our two centre half, you would see Chambers fill back in there and we'd bring whoever off the bench, Young Tim or whatever, or, or Nakamba yeah. to uh, to fill in that job. But, but it's important, he spoke about it many times, to, to have those young people around the squad and be involved in match day. Mm. And and Carney is there, so I wouldn't rule out seeing them all going yeah. well. Ronan makes a good point here as well. He said that it's great to see Emmy in. Jared is having a look at his players in shape, and I'm of the same view. But Absolutely. when we talk about Emmy Mar- or Emmy Buendia, Emmy Martin is, it would have been some shock if he wasn't started. But Emmy Buendia, <laughs> it, it, it's probably the right time to, to start him now. If he wasn't started in this game, I think a lot of people would have been throwing a lot of toys out of a lot of prams, and it would have been a real tantrum, I think, in the comments, because, you know, I think the overarching feeling was 
when he came on against Norwich, he looked good. When he's come on these 10, 15 minute cameos over the last three, four weeks, he's looked good. He's looked industrious. He's looked getting the ball. He's looked to drop into better pockets and maybe he's turned and he's taking shots as well at times. What do you think, Paddy? Do you think it's it's that this is probably the game considering that, look, we're not going to drop Philippe Coutinho against Liverpool. Um, and we've got Liverpool coming up um, in a couple of days' time. Yeah, there is that element of it too. But I, ju- I just felt when, when I saw he was missing off the team sheet, for me, today is the day you, you don't have the luxury of a Philip Coutinho. This is, the, this is going to be blood and guts, I think, from the start for, from a team who are absolutely fighting for their lives. And, and let's face it, another win for Burnley could probably keep them safe. Mm. You know, that's, it, it would be a huge day for Burnley should they go and get three points today. So, um, for me, if, if we're going to pick a game where, where we were going to, we're not going to have Coutinho, it was probably today, and that's what's happened. Yeah, there seems to be, it seems to be a real good talking point. I know we made, we made a joke of it there. Well, uh, sorry, I did about the three at the back, but there seems to be genuine discussion in the Twitter comments. I, I suppose we, we'll know soon enough. We'll know when the game kicks off, but yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm never averse to three at the back. I was very pro three at the back before it came in. I just always make a joke that, you know, when we played three at the back, it became such a pariah so quickly amongst the fan base because we weren't really, okay, we had, a, we had that really interesting first half against Chelsea and then Lukaku just went to town on us and probably hasn't had a decent game since. Um, and then after that, it was kind of, we did have some abject performances with three at the back. But um, I th- you know, I'm, I, I'm okay with it. I just think that if we do play Chambers there as that, as that guy that's a bit, a bit further forward, because remember when we had Steven Gerrard? Remember when Steven Gerrard first came in and we had centre half striding out of defence? Maybe he wants to try and get that again. And, and Chambers was tasked with doing that at times, you know, bringing the ball out of defence. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe if it is a pseudo three at the back, I'm going to call it, he is given a, um, instead of playing a sweeper, he's, he's going to probably play a bit further forward than the other two guys there. But I, 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 do, I just don't see three in the back in Steven Gerrard's mentality or his DNA. Um, I could be wrong. I've nothing to base that on other than the fact that I think he wants to push Louise into the eighth position to see what he has there. Um, and then once again, I'm going to be really mm-hmm. honest, that's my confirmation bias because it's what I really want. It's what I want to see happen. So that's why I'm I'm uh, I'm kind of uh, I'm I'm poo pooing a lot of the tree at the back because while I do love that formation, <laughs> I think it's a good formation provided that you have it really drilled in. You can't just turn up on a singular day and play a tree at the back and expect to be great. You know you have to drill it in. Um, uh, provided you can do that, I think it's a good formation uh, as, as well. Um, but once again, PSK makes a great point here as well that with Veghorst uh, up there as well. Uh, it could be a case that Mings and Chambers, like he's a brute of a man, an absolute brute yeah. of a man up there. Um, and uh, he could be single-handedly the reason why I don't finish bottom of my um, my fantasy uh, draft league that we have going at the moment. Because since he's came in, he's got me a couple of uh, a couple of uh, wonder points there. Um, but he is strong in the air and he has contributed with a couple of goals for them and a couple of assists. So maybe we do have one eye on him as well. Uh, PRF Clark says... Uh, he had money on Luis being our player of the season. So maybe this is this is the start of his campaign. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think we'd all love to see that. We'd all love to see somebody put their hand up to be our to be our outright uh, player of the season without having Jacob Ramsey in the team now today. I think it's probably Manny Cash's chance. Get forward, get into the box, win us a penalty. You haven't had a penalty in God knows how long. I think, you know, so we, I think we, we need to win a penalty today, be aggressive, attack their fullbacks and push them back because um, we haven't seen their teams. And I'm actually going to transition up their team here now so we can talk a small bit more about Burnley's team. So uh, I, think the last, I think the last time you mentioned us not having a penalty, we got a penalty. So I think that's the best for today. OK, well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, remember, bet responsibly. Don't, when, the fun, when the fun stops, stop and, and, and all that jazz as well. But the Burnley team is probably to be as expected. I, um, we have Nick Pope, Tarkovsky, Charlie Taylor, uh, um, Connor Roberts, Nathan Collins, my boy, is in there as well. Um, Aaron Lennon, Jack Cork, Brownhill and Barnes. As Aaron, Aaron Lennon, Jack Cork, Brownhill and McNeil will make up the midfield and two big battering rams up there and Ashley Barnes and Voot Veghorst up there uh, to play uh, to play the strikers roles there. Um, with Burnley, you know, Ashley Barnes, while he is a big, massive man, he does always play Rough, usually behind that striker and um, so I'd imagine we'd see him drop deep and maybe that's why Chambers is in there because if he was dropping deep on a young Tim or on a um, on a the likes of likes even of, of Douglas Louise 
you know, he's just mm. a he's just a Hulk, you know. So maybe Chambers in there to play that defensive midfielder position is to stop one of the two of them dropping deep, getting nods on for the like Aaron Lennon is 90 years of age, but he's still fast. Brownhill gets past the gets past the striker, and we know Dwight McNeil does as well. So um there's a lot there, there's while while there's not a lot in that team that that uh is news to me, should I say it's exactly how I expected. Uh they do have a very, very definite way of, of playing, and we need to we need to keep an eye on that, I think, as well. Uh, what do you make of their teams, Paddy? Who who's who's the danger man there for you within that team? Uh, well, before before we move on, is, uh, our two our two former boys aren't around today as well. So we always have an illogical fear with those two. Um, who Westwood? Westwood and and uh, Matt Loughton are both out today. Mm. So well, Loughton is on the bench. Um, Jay Rodriguez. Jay Rodriguez is. Injured, he's out so as well. Yeah, that's always good. He's not well. even on the bench. Phil Bardsley, Paddy, our third guy is, is there. Phil Bardsley. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, Bardsley must be t- picking up the bus pass next year. I'd say he must be ancient. So. Yeah. Um, like you said, Red Horse is is my worry. Um, uh, Corn has to come off the bench. Also, has he's had an up and down time since he came in, but when, when he's on fire, he's on fire. Uh, Lennon always seems to have a good game against us. McNeil, yeah, I'd be worried about McNeil, although I don't think he's had the season that he had last year. I thought he was immense last year for them. So, uh, yeah, look, there's, there's there's talent there. It's just it's just about when it comes together, and it has come together for the last three games. They've, they've got nine points in three games, um, so and and a, and a point in the game before that as well, if memory serves me correct. So, um, I, I'm expecting them to go for this hammer and tongs. They've nothing to lose here. I did probably take a point um, to start off with, but we, we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I want to make an apology to Phil Bardsley. If he's picking up the bus pass, I must have it already because he's three months younger than me. So uh, <laughs> he's only he's only young fella. He's only young fella. Thirty six. He's only young fella. Thirty six. I I'm recently turned thirty seven. So. Um, I do apologize to the, Phil Bardsley and all belonging to him out there. But uh, <laughs> look, Aaron Lennon is 35. You know, he's going to be playing that wing role as well. Um, who, so, like he's still he's still lightning fast, you know, not as fast as he used to be, but he's still yeah. still a decent player. He's definitely there, Ashley Young. Could you imagine if Ashley Young went to Bar- went to, to, to Burnley like he was originally supposed to be? And yeah. he was playing on that left hand side and they had an Ashley Young, Aaron Lennon, left hand side or, or, or even right hand side. God forbid. Um, you know, that'd be something that would almost be like playing FIFA 97 or something. Um, having those two guys there in midfield, we're missing Ashley Westwood. I'm digressing and I'm talking, I'm trying to be a comedian, I'm making a bad job of it. Um, in midfield, Paddy, they're obviously missing Ashley Westwood. Um, Jack Cork has come in there, and you know what? You, you talk about professionals within the game, and you talk about fellas who probably don't get the due that they're deserved. Jack Cork never lets you down. Like, He's you, you, I remember talking to Southampton fans previously when he played with them and they went, I'd have 11 Jack Corks every day of the week over yeah. a Virgil van Dijk or Sadio Mane or anything because they just knew Jack Cork was there. When he, when he laced up his boots, he was going playing football and that was it. You know, there was mm-hmm. no airs of graces about him. And, and you kind of, I suppose, it's fellas like him. And, and, and I must say his name is Jack Frank P- Porteus Cork is his name. So he gets great... Uh, Great kudos for that uh, that third name that he has there, Porteus. Porteus, Porteus, um, it's a fantastic name anyway. But he's, um, you know, he's just a good professional. And sometimes teams mm-hmm. just need those to come in there and sit in there. And he's he's had a fantastic career. Uh, made his debut twenty sixteen. Made his made his debut in two thousand and six for for Chelsea. And uh, he, for well, he he was playing with Bournemouth actually at the time, but he was on loan from Chelsea. And he's still playing to this day, six, uh, eleven years onwards. And he's had racked up a lot of appearances there. So fair play to him, only, only 32 years of age. But he's one of these players that managers just love picking. And he's an England cap. Jack Cork mm. is an England cap, people yeah. don't forget. Yeah. No, as you say, great professional. It's, it's good to have those guys in there when you're when you're in the midst of a fight to try and fight for your lives. You know, we, we, all, we all thought when, when Sean Deutsch went that it was a mistake. I, I think even their fans will tell you they thought it was a mistake. Well, here they are now on the cusp of, of staying up and uh, they've put up one hell of a fight for the last three games. And all we got to hope for is that ends today and, and we, we can find a bit of form and continue on from where we have on getting our point at Leicester and getting our three points last week. But this is going to be a completely different type of game for us. 
Um, and as I said, that's the reason we're not seeing uh, Philippe Coutinho today. It's, it's not a day for magic. It's a day for blood, touch, blood and guts and, and, uh, and getting stuck in and, and an element of fight. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what, what we do with, with Callum Chambers. And I think that's the big talking point today. Yeah, absolutely. And look, we're not going to sit here and pretend that we know where he's going to play. Um, it's 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 a case of, you know, we can only make our, make as much of a guess at it as you guys can. But, you know, as we always say, first 10 minutes of every game tells us the story of, of uh, what, the t- what the manager wants to do. And uh, I hope we, we w- it'll become that apparent and we will be able to see it. Um, before we finish up there, guys, pop in there what you think the results are going to be in the comments and we'll do a quick fire. I'll try and show as many of them and we'll try and... I like to do my kind of my auctioneer uh, impression here where I talk as fast as I possibly can and go through, go down through all of the scores. So pop in a couple of scores there, guys, and we will we will go down through them. Um, I suppose just one little thing before we uh, before we do get to that. Um, like. Is there, there still is talk of relegation, Paddy, and, and, and we'll just kind of I think we we'll just kind of finish on this before we get to the scores. But. There's, there's seems to be zero talk of, of potentially getting top half, but everyone's talking about relegation, mm. and we've just as much a chance of getting top half as we do relegation, and exactly. I just want to, yeah. I, I kind of want to understand, I suppose, from yourself, are you, uh, and I won't even say a glass half, I'm half empty or half full, but where do you personally come down on it? Because my, my, my thoughts are out there. I, I, I think there is no hope in hell that we're going to get relegated. Um. Well, I think there's a reason they call. The forty point mark, the magic forty point mark, because I don't think anybody has ever gone down with forty points. Would, would that be correct? West Ham, I think, went down with forty points once. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think they did. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and while while it's mathematically still possible, and, and don't don't forget as well that our goal difference is, is really really good. So that that technically they say we got yes. forty one points. So um, while there's still a mathematical chance, we have to be worried about it. I would like to see that put to bed today with with a good performance. A point will probably do it. And that's, that's probably where I see it coming today. I, I, I see a, a good few goals, and I'm going to go for a 2-2 today because I think that will probably be enough to keep us up and probably a point that they'd be happy with. Uh, keep talking there, Paddy. I need to load up all these comments. <laughs> There's a rake of them. There's a rake of them. Lo- uh, uh, yeah, 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 I think I have got the majority of them. If I do miss out, on- oh, geez, there's more. They keep coming, keep them coming, keep them coming, keep them coming. This is going to be difficult on the voice. Is your deep, uh, your deep breath now, Neil, before you tear into these? Right. Here goes. So we're going to start off with Cy Staples says, I'm a bit confident now looking at the 11, which is very unlike me, 2-0 Aston Villa. James says, uh, oh, where's James gone? Uh, Burnley 1, Villa 2. Master P says, 2-0. I think that's 2-0 Villa. I hope it is. Not 2-0 Burnley, but it could just as easy be. Same with, same with Ty Terror. 2-0. I'm going to take that as a 2-0 Villa. Uh, Tom Fleming says one all. Uh, Kat Cannon also goes with one all. Morgan McComb goes with one all. Jason at Jason198 goes with 2-1 Villa. Jack goes 2-1 Villa. I think they're 2-1 Villa. I, I don't know whether you're doing it in the away, home away scores, but I'm going to any... I'm just saying Villa are going to win, so so that's okay, unless unless otherwise stipulated. Uh, Owen Bradley says 3-1 Villa. Joe Keaveney goes for one all draw. Uh, PRF Clark says Bur- BFC 0, AVFC 3. Neil Bates says 3-0 Villa. Uh, King 81 says nil nil dull game. It could as easily be because not, neither team uh-huh. likes having yeah. the ball. Uh, John Adderley says 3-1 Villa. Noel Collington says 2-1 Villa. Mark Farrington says 2-1 Villa. Mark Barron says 2-1 Villa. Christina Gavin says 2-1 Villa. PS K says 2-0 Villa and O'Grady says 2-1 Villa Rob Henry, Rob Henry says 2-1 Villa Richard Law says 3-0 Villa arm emoji Jordy Villain says 3-1 Watkins to put them to bed early uh, Music Junkie says 2-0 unfortunately so I'm going to say that as 2-0 Burnley um, <laughs> Brian Thompson says 3-0 Villa Jason, Car- Jason Kerr says Hart says 2-1 Villa Head says 1-all Matt Warner says 1-0 Villa where have we any more there I think we've got some more there Ross Morrison says 3-1 Villa uh, Stephen Tarpey says 2-0 uh, to the Mighty Villa. Ron Ward says 2-0 Villa. Aaron says 2-1 Villa. Bell Size Line says 1-all. Uh, Kerpal Singh says 3-0 Villa. HSS says 6-0 Villa. And I'm not doing any more scores because I like that score. And that's the one I wanted to be. 6-0 Villa. 90-minute performance. Gerard nails the, nails the selection. We come away from Burnley with 
take, we take all their beautiful pies that they make in the Burnley area. We eat them all in front of them and we don't give them a crumb and we beat them 6-0. How's about that? That's exactly how I would love this game to finish. But, um, Paddy, what did you say you, you thought the game was going to finish? Uh, I'm going 2-2. Two, two. I th- I You're I'll going 2-2. Two, two. I think I'll take that now. Be an entertaining game at 2 2. I'm going with 2 1 mm-hmm. Villa, and I think we take a 2 0 lead. And Burnley, Burnley, obviously, with their fighting nature, come back and get a goal. And I think it could be squeaky bum time towards the end, but I think we haul out for a 2 1 win. Um, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us today. This has been really, really good fun. I'm finally getting used to how to use all the, the, the new toys here in the Villa View system. So, uh, thanks for bearing with us over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and, and it's it's been a blast. I really appreciate everybody coming on. Before we go, uh, the wonderful guys at Boohoo Man, they sponsor the show here for the guys in the Villa View. Extra 10% off all Boohoo Man wins wear with code Villa View. And as we say, it does exclude some sale and some selected brands, uh, some selected items, should I say, but it's still 10% off. It's an extra 10% off on, on the, the mark price that is there as well. So please don't forget to use that if Boohoo Man is your shopping place of persuasion. So uh, I think that's going to do it. 2.23, perfect time. I'm going to get out, try and get into the sun before it goes before it goes in. And then I'm going to park myself in front of the TV for an absolute evening of unbelievable sport in which I hope Aston Villa win. Um, Paddy, enjoy your... I, I'm sure you've probably got tickets to about four gigs above in Dublin tonight and you've probably got tickets no, to I don't straight, know, Disney on back. Ice tomorrow or something. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, straight, back, you... straight back after this. And I'm going to have the dulcet of tones of Mark Regan on hopefully in, in my ears while I'm, uh, while I'm watching the rugby. Um, Absolutely. I won't be I won't be one of those guys that sits there with the with the match on on the phone when I'm trying to watch it. There will be at the same time, but uh, I'll be watching on Villa TV at uh, at twelve o'clock tonight with with a couple of beers hopefully and celebrating the win. Excellent. I hope so too. Once again, thanks everybody. Really appreciate your company for today. Thanks to the guys at the Villa View. Thanks to, to Dan. Thanks to Chris. Thanks to Omar. Thanks to Adam. Thanks to all the guys. Thanks to John. Thanks to all the guys once again for allowing us to come here and put our feet up on our table and get comfortable for the evening with you or for the afternoon with you guys. Uh, 25 past two, ample time to go in, get your beverage of choice and get some snacks in as well. Uh, we personally will be back on our own pod with a, uh, a, a reaction pod. Look, if, if it's a 6-0, like HSS said, you can be guaranteed <laughs> I'll be on two minutes after the game to gloat all over the place. Uh, but we will be back with an instant reaction show. The guys at the Villa View will be back with a purity sponsor post match point as well at some stage uh, in, in the coming days. So uh, keep an ear. If you aren't already subscribed to the Villa View, please subscribe. If you aren't subscribed to us here in Further Love Pomegranate, we'd love it if you could sc- subscribe to us as well. Maybe follow us on Twitter. You can follow me on at Love McGrath Pod. You can follow Paddy on at Villa Paddy. I know you forgot what his handle was there. Uh, so you'll be able to get him there. Uh, I'm rambling now, but thanks so much, everybody. It's been really, really nice uh, half an hour that we've spent. Going to let you back to your day now. And all that's left to say is we hope we're going to have a, a momentous win today. And up the Villa. Up the Villa. <laughs>